Hey everybody, this is my 40 gallon brackish tank and tonight we're going to watch Butterbean, my figure 8 puffer, have his dinner of snails and I want to talk about brackish aquariums, brackish water, the animals that live in brackish water and so on and so forth. I've had a few questions lately and I realize it's been quite a while since I've done a video where I've actually discussed this kind of stuff so tonight's going to be the night where we do it. So first of all, just to get some of the terminology down to understand what brackish water is, uh, the first thing we need to understand is what specific gravity is and the salinity of water. So the salinity of water or the specific gravity of water is basically a measurement of the density of water. A drop of water is a drop of water, but a drop of pure water is not the same as a drop of salt water. There's a lot of stuff dissolved into that salt water. So the specific gravity is the measurement of how much stuff is dissolved into your water. And I know we generally use the specific gravity, you'll see it abbreviated as SG. You generally see that in reference to saltwater animals or brackish water animals, not freshwater animals. But that does not mean your freshwater tank doesn't have a specific gravity. So that's what brackish water is, is it's a measurement of the specific gravity. If you start with pure water, you start with a specific gravity of 1, and then as you add dissolved mineral salts to it, that number gets higher and higher, and when you get to a certain point, you reach water that's no longer considered fresh water, but it's not salt water yet either, it's not ocean water. That's brackish water, it's that water that's in between. It's saltier than fresh water, but it's not salty enough to be considered marine water. Now, some people will say that the bottom end of brackish water starts at 1.005. That's personally where I think it starts. Other people say you don't really technically get into brackish water until 1.008. Either way, right around in there is the bottom end of brackish water. And then as the mineral salts accumulate and the water gets saltier and saltier, that specific gravity gets higher and higher. In other words, the water is getting denser and denser with more stuff dissolved into it. That specific gravity is getting higher. And when you get up to about 1.018 to 1.02, that's getting into salt water. You're now into what would be seawater or marine water. And then that can go up even higher than that. There's a range of different salinities with salt water. There's not just salt water, fresh water, and then everything in between. Each category of water has a range of specific gravities that qualify it as either freshwater, brackish water, or marine water. And that's why when you look at water, uh, freshwater fish, it'll say it's either a softwater fish or a hardwater fish. That would, that's discussing, that's basically talking about the specific gravity for that particular fish. If that was a brackish animal, you might say it needs low-end brackish or it might need high-end brackish. Marine animals would be the same way. You could say it might need low-end marine or it might need high-end marine. But for some reason when we talk about freshwater, we don't say you need low-end freshwater or high-end freshwater. We say you need soft water versus hard water. I'm not really exactly sure why that is, but hard water doesn't just become brackish water if it gets hard enough. Um, there's a few sort of weird disqualifying aspects of what makes brackish water brackish water. It's not just stuff dissolved into it. If you took um, aquarium salt, sodium chloride, and you dissolved a bunch of it in there, the specific gravity would go way up, but that still wouldn't be brackish water. That would just be salty water. That also wouldn't be marine water. That would just be salty water. That's not the same as marine water. And, and brackish is the same way. Brackish water needs marine salts in order to become brackish water. So if you've got hard water fish like African cichlids and you're putting magnesium and you're putting calcium in the water and you've got that water really hard, that's, you know, that's better than soft water if you've got a brackish fish living in that kind of water. That's better for them than putting them in really, really soft water but it's still not the same as brackish water. It does have a lot of dissolved solids in the water, but it has to have that wide array of dissolved mineral salts that marine water has. And I don't know what all the mineral salts off the top of my head are, but it's a lot of them. It's a big 
recipe of dissolved mineral salts that makes up ocean water, or marine water. That's what brackish water is. It's, it's saltier than fresh water, but it's not yet ocean water. That doesn't mean it's hard water. And I know I, I start to get all convoluted when I start talking about the minor differences, but it really it does make a difference. So that's what brackish water is. Now, if we think about where we find brackish water in the real world, that gives us a good idea about the animals that live in that kind of water and in that kind of environment. So where we find brackish water in the real world is usually in estuaries, bays, harbors, river deltas, you know, anywhere where fresh water is flowing into and mixing with ocean water, salt water. You can find brackish water in some other places if there's lowlands with real high salt contents in the soil. You might find some marshy, sort of brackishy marsh sort of areas and stuff like that. But by and large, for the most part, where you're going to find brackish environments in the wild or in the natural world is going to be these mixing zones where the fresh water is flowing into the salt water. And that's important to think about and that's important to remember. I live right near the Chesapeake Bay and I was actually looking at the Chesapeake Bay this morning while I was at work and I got to thinking about what an amazingly complex body of water the Chesapeake Bay is. And when you think about the difference between, say, the Atlantic Ocean and marine water, and then the headwaters up at the Susquehanna River, that is a freshwater river flowing into it, it's not this steady gradient of we start with salt water at the ocean and the further upstream we go, the less salty it gets. It's not that simple. It, the, the currents and the rivers, I mean, we've got the, you know, huge rivers flow into this thing all up and down it, and there's all sorts of currents and, and you know, thermal haline differences, and there's all sorts of stuff going on in this body of water. So the fish that are swimming around in that, like the fish that swim around in just about all bodies of brackish water, are rapidly going from one specific gravity to the next. If you were to take samples at random spots all over the bay, you'd have specific gravity all over the place. It's not just this steady, fresher and fresher the further upstream you go. It can be if you've got just a simple river flowing into a simple, you know, coastline on the side of the ocean or something, that maybe a mile before you get to the ocean, you start getting into saltier and saltier water, and the closer you get to the ocean, the saltier it gets, and so on and so forth. But there, that's not always the case. You can also have heavy rains where suddenly lots of extra fresh water is coming down. and Or you can have a high tide or a storm surge that pushes lots of salt water up and in. So the point I'm trying to make with all of this is the rapid change in salinity that these animals are capable of dealing with. In fact, that's what the word urihaline means. And urihaline is the type of animal that lives in brackish water. A stenohaline animal is one that needs to live in a, a certain parameters of specific gravity. Our freshwater fish are stenohaline fish and our marine animals are stenohaline animals. They need to stay in a very narrow band of salinity. The urihaline animals, what we often refer to as brackish animals, those can go in a wide range of salinity. That's what urihaline means. And they can do it quickly. They, you don't have to slowly acclimate these fish into different water. Um, I bring them home from the aquarium shop or whatever. They've been kept in freshwater, my mollies or whatever. I don't think twice about plucking mollies out of one of my freshwater tank and plopping them in my brackish tank. It doesn't phase them a bit. That's what they're kind of built for. And that's where I usually get the most questions when it comes to the brackish tank. and It's questions about acclimations and how quickly you can shift from, you know, I've got them in fresh water right now, you know, every, every water change I do, I'm going to make it a little more. Just make it to whatever specific gravity you want. If you want it at 1.008, you can just make it at 1.008. That fish isn't going to bat an eyelash at that. That's what they're built for. They can go up and down rapidly 
through varying stages of salinity. That's why they can be sold as freshwater fish, even though they're not really. In, in this case, I've got the bumblebee gobies uh, and then the figure eight puffer. Both are fish that need really to be in brackish water long term. And in my opinion, the mollies, probably if not in hard water, should be in brackish water. Uh, mollies don't do well in soft water at all. So molly to me is kind of a low end brackish fish also, but I'll make that exception for them. The but the um, I was going to say the butter beans, the figure eight puffers and the bumblebee gobies really are brackish animals though. They're urihaline animals that really need to be in brackish water. Um, that's another point I'll make while I'm just pulling it out of my head there. Not all brackish animals are the same. Just like some animals need to be, you know, freshwater fish, some need to be in, in soft water, some need to be in hard water, but they're all still considered freshwater. There are some brackish fish or some urihaline fish that need to be in higher end brackish, you know, getting up there towards marine water. Green spot puffer is a good example. They start out in fresh. As juveniles, they need to move into low end brackish. And by the time they're adults, they need to be either in very high end brackish or straight up marine water by the time they're adults. Other fish will spend their whole life in one, like Butterbean here, he will spend his whole life in brackish water, but it changes every time I do a water change. I'm not super critical about worrying about that. I measure out about the same amount of salt every time I do a water change and I usually do a little taste test on the water. I dip my finger in it and taste it and if it's where it seems to be right salt wise, I'm, I've done it enough times, I know where that is, they're fine. It, it, it's, it's not really really critical like when you've got a marine tank you've got to make sure it's a certain specific gravity or it'll shock your corals or whatever. That's what brackish animals are built to do is to shift their salinity. However, as I was saying, there are some animals that really are more adapted to low-end brackish water or some that might rather be in high-end brackish water. Mollies can go in everything from marine water to fresh water. Again, I don't recommend them being in soft water if you do keep them in fresh water. At the very least, put some aquarium salt in the water with your mollies or you're just not going to have good luck with them. I've tried and tried and tried over the years. They really do need something in the water. Uh, to harden it up or to salty it up. So that's about all I can really think of as far as what brackish water is and how you do it. Um, I've shot video before, I've talked about how you mix it up. You basically just, you, again, you got to use marine salts. You mix it up to whatever specific gravity you want. To know what specific gravity you, you want, you need to buy yourself a measuring device, whether it's a little refractometer, a little hydrometer. Neither one is very expensive. For $20 or less, you'll have your way of telling what your specific gravity is. Um, I get a lot of questions about that. People asking me, how can they tell? You can't. If you don't have a refractometer or a hydrometer, you can't tell what your specific gravity is. That, that's just the long and short of it. You need to measure it in order to find out what it is, and that's the only way you can do it. Um, so that's it. You mix up your brackish water. You treat it like it's a freshwater tank. I guess that's important to point out, too. The nitrifying bacteria that is in your filter in a brackish tank, especially a low-end brackish tank like this, I usually keep the water around 1.005 to 1.008. It is the same species of nitrifying bacteria that are in freshwater. When you get into marine water or very, very high end brackish, then it is different species of bacteria that do the magic of our nitrogen cycle. If you got a brackish tank or you're setting up a brackish tank, it's going to be just the same as if you're setting up a freshwater tank. If you want to spike it with, with squeezing out a sponge from a different tank or rinsing out a filter from a different tank and you got a freshwater tank, do it. It's that's the same species of bacteria. Uh, again, you don't have to worry about acclimating the fish or anything like that. If you've got plants, you might want to acclimate. I've always sort of struggled to keep plants alive. I finally backed off of my salinity a little bit. I used to keep it between 1.008 and 1.010, and I could never even keep the Java alive in that. So down at around 1.005, I'm able to keep the Java looking fairly green. Um, Anubius will probably work in brackish water, again low end. 
you can get Marimo moss balls. They'll go all the way up into marine water. You can put them in your marine aquarium if you want. And Java moss, I believe, will do just fine in brackish water. And floating water sprite will actually do okay in, bra in brackish water, too. It doesn't thrive, but it does survive in brackish water, again, on the very low-end scale. So, that, I think, is all I can think of. But there's always the future. I can always shoot more video, and if you've got any questions, Please, by all means, leave them down below for me. If I get them, and that's hit or miss with YouTube, they give me notifications sometimes, sometimes they don't. Uh, if I do get the comment, I will respond to it. So make sure if you've got any questions or anything, uh, hit me up. And you can also, I'll put my email down below if you're interested in any plants or anything like that that you want to purchase or whatever. Uh, you can contact me through my email there. So thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful. Hope I didn't wander around in circles too much. Uh, make sure you subscribe, that way you won't miss anything I got coming up. You never know what it's going to be. Don't forget this one here is my brackish tank. I do have a brackish paludarium behind us. That's what all that splashing water you can hear is. But this one here is my brackish tank. So thanks again for watching. See you real soon in the next one.